What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, back for another episode of the third person adventure game tutorial. So this time we're going to go over taking uh, damage and getting health from pickups. In the last episode you'll see we had this little guy, he was running around. Uh, you could reduce his health and uh, apply his health back, but this time I took out the debugging features and we're going to use it strictly through collision with pickups. We'll also go over destroying the pickups in the proper way once you've collected them so you can't continue to collect them. So the damage pickup obviously would be more something like an obstacle, it would probably be like spikes in your case or something like that, but the mesh itself doesn't really matter here, we're just going to do basic collision. So to get started we're just going to make a few changes to the code that we made in the second episode I believe. Uh, we're going to go down here to our heal and take damage functions that we made and just make them U functions. When you make something a U function, it allows it to be accessed in blueprints. So we can see it in things like our HUD, or in this case, when doing collision checks in our collectibles. Or our pickups. So blueprint callable just means you can literally call the function from blueprint. That's pretty simple and self-explanatory. And then the category just tells you where it's going to uh, be applied to when searching for it in blueprint so I just put health you can leave this part out entirely it's not important it's just for organization I think we went over that with some of the variables but you can also use it for functions as you see here so these are the same functions we made last time it's just void take damage and void heal if you want to see them again there you go so it's just basically taking the health that you have, subtracting the damage, or adding the healing amount to your health, depending on uh, what function it is. And the start healing, start damage functions were the debug functions that you could just press a button and test out the functionality, but we know it works, so we don't need to do that anymore. Okay. Now, let's go to Unreal. That's all we're doing in terms of code for today. The rest of it is actually Blueprint. So I made a new blueprint. I will show you here. Um, blueprints. I have a folder named Blueprints. And I just made a simple actor blueprint class. So all you have to do is add new blueprint class. And once you make this, it'll be just an empty white ball with nothing else in it. So I gave it some color. We'll go over that in a little bit. But here's the only functionality you'll really need to make this happen. So for the healing part, there's going to be nothing in here. You're going to have begin play, after begin overlap, and event tick, but they won't have anything to do. Uh, they won't have anything connected to them. So what you're going to do is I'm using event tick now. Normally, event tick, you know, people will say it's not exactly something you should be using. Uh, you should use it as little as possible, and that's true. For the purposes of this video, it's definitely fine, and honestly. Uh, I've been in some professional environments where they use tick for a lot of stuff that we get told not to use it for and never even seen a frame drop. So I think it's more than more than enough for right now to use it on tick. But if you want to do it the correct way, quote unquote, you would actually want to have an event when any sort of collision occurs with that collectible and check if it's a player then instead of on tick. And we can actually do that. Um, I did it in the fighting game tutorial. If you want to check it out, I'll link it up in the iCard in the top right corner. But uh, we can go over that in another episode if we want to do it here as well. But for now, event tick is fine. It'll show you what you're doing is right. If you have any issues, uh, you can comment down below and I'll help you when I get the chance. So basically, uh, we're just getting player ca character zero in this case which we know is our main character. If we are going to do it with more than one character, we can set up our players through our HUD or through our like uh, overall blueprint class. Also was something we did in the fighting game tutorial. For this specifically, I don't plan on this ever being any sort of case where you need more than one player, at least not for a long time. So this will do the trick for now. I wouldn't worry about it unless your case requires two players. So just get your first player character and you can do this uh, blueprint node is overlapping is overlapping actor so if you right click literally just is overlapping actor the first one because we want an actor because we want our fighter 
character or our third person character, whatever you decide to call him. So you just get the character, determine if it's overlapping with the collectible health. Since we're in the health variable now, the target can be self. Just make sure to check if they're overlapping. If they are, then you're going to cast it to our Gears of War template character, which, as we decided last time, was strangely named because it's not just the Gears of War tutorial. But this is your third-person character class. So we're casting it to this. And if the cast succeeds, we know we are a third-person character. So then we're going to heal. And the heal amount is 0 0.25. That's 25% of their health because, in our case, the scale is from 0 to 1. So there you go. Um, and then once you're done with that, you should destroy the actor because if you don't, they will just sit there and you can keep healing off of them. Especially if you do decide to do it on tech, this is going to get very costly because you're going to keep successfully casting this and then trying to destroy this actor or not trying to destroy the actor. So you're just going to keep doing that over and over again. So you might as well destroy it. That way they can only use it once. Now, the good part about this is the collectible damage blueprint is pretty much exactly the same. So imagine this were spikes or whatever you have as your enemy here. You can actually use this as any sort of collision. So if you use collision against, uh, like, enemy players or just enemies in game, you can use the same thing. It'll be slightly different because it won't be overlap all. You will need to be able to block collision unless you want to be able to walk through people. We'll go over that in another episode, but you can feel free to use this. To get started if you feel confident in it it's the same basic idea in this case of course instead of healing we're we're going to call our take damage function i decided to take damage for 0.5 or half of our health that way you can just see if the health is working instead of just going back to a full bar you see it goes halfway down and then now it's at 75 percent that's easy enough um let's go over the collectibles real quick so for the materials themselves, how to make them look nicer than just that regular white ball that you get. All you have to do is, here I'll show you. I made an art folder and a materials folder. You can right click and create a new material. The, the basic, the kind of rule of thumb for naming these things is to have M in front of them. I've seen M underscore, just lowercase M, whatever you want to do. But this is just to kind of differentiate them because for example, I called this collectible health collectible damage. I could have called these the same thing, and Unreal would have been fine with that because they're a different file type. It's a lot easier to distinguish them if you have M underscore or underscore M to start. To, that way you know it's a material. So yeah, so if you just create a new material, you'll have, you won't have this in here. It'll just look like this. All you have to do is right click and type in vector and it'll be the first thing, vector parameter. I'm gonna just delete that and paste it because I cut the other one. But all you have to do is uh, double click in this box and you can get your little color picker. So you can select what colors you want. For health, I chose green because that seems like probably the best color to use for that. You can hit save. You can hit apply if you want to. I usually do because I'm so used to it uh, from work. <laughs> But there's no real, reason, no real reason to do it here, so I wouldn't worry about that. And then for damage, I just chose red. It's kind of more like a burgundy, but it's the same exact premise. And then lastly, um, there are some things we'll need to do to make sure that the collision actually works between the objects. So right now we have them set, if they're overlapping right here, then this functionality will happen. Well, normally if you just spawn an object in the scene, especially if it's just a blueprint class actor, it's collision will be set to default. Um, oh, I skipped over it. There it is. Be set to default. Now, I set it in the object as well. But if you go into, if it's default, you'll just kind of hit up against it and you'll never be able to collect it. And you also won't be able to walk through it, which usually you can walk through pickups. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What we should do instead is set the collision presets to overlap all. And you could do things like overlap only pawn, and that would probably be better than overlap all, to be honest, because this will only, f the overlap functionality will only occur when you're overlapping a pawn, such as the player. But 
uh, again, for the purposes of just making sure this works and us setting up an event later to make the collision and the performance better, overlap all is fine. So uh, that's good. You also want to generate overlap events. If you don't generate these events, you'll be able to walk right through the player or walk right through the pickup, but you won't actually pick it up as you see here. So the important things here are make it overlap all or overlap only pawn and then generate overlap events. In the class itself, I made these the default. So I would recommend doing that. That way you don't have to set that every time you make a new, you uh, drag a new instance into the scene. To do that, you just go to your blueprint class, go to your static mesh component that's already there by default when you make it. You can set your material in here. So you just uh, do this drop down box and select the one that you want. And that'll set it as a default. Again, you can do this on a case by case basis as well. So you can just go and set it in the scene. But if you want them all to look the same, just set it right here. And then you can set your options here. Generate overlap events, yes, and overlap all. And you can see I've done that for this as well. I set it damage collectible, and then yes, and overlap all. Lastly, um, I also took away the shadows because if you cast these shadows, you'll see that they actually stay when you pick them up. And you'll be like, wait, they're not here. You, if you do anything with lighting, especially shadows, you have to build lighting. So make sure you go up to build and you can do build lighting only, or you can build everything if you want, but there's no reason to in this case. So you can apply now. Uh, that pop-up actually popped up below my my screen, so you want to have seen it in the screen capture, but there's a little box in the bottom right that pops up that says apply now with a question mark, and you're just going to hit yes, apply now. And then you can see your shadows. You can tell our light source is a little bit to the right, up and to the right, or up and to the left, excuse me. Uh, so if you collect something, the issue is that the shadow will actually still be there, which is obviously not what we want and looks really ugly which is why I recommend just turning shadows off because I don't really think in this case it makes it look any less ugly. And then you also don't have to worry about it, uh, them being there after you pick them up, which just looks bad. So then we just build lighting again and saying it at the bottom building lighting and then it applies, we can save it and we're back to how we were. There we go. So that's everything for, those are basic collectibles, basic pickups. Uh, you can use these for any sort of pickups or collectibles though. For example, if you wanted ammo, obviously you don't want to do damage to the health or anything like that, but you can do the same exact collision logic and, you know, just instead of calling heal, call add ammo or something like that. So that's a pretty simple mechanic, but very useful. And you can use that kind of collision structure for a lot of things in your project. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'm Sean LeBro. Um, I'll post some links in the description of other videos that I talked about earlier. Uh, the fighting game one, I believe it was episode six or seven, where we do the more the more correct quote unquote way to do the character one, character two logic, as well as the doing collision on an event as opposed to tick. If you want to check that out. But that's all I got for you today. So thanks for watching my video, guys. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It helps me out more than anything. And if you have any suggestions or ideas that you want to see in a future video, let me down. Let me know down below. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Goodbye.